My name is Elisa and welcome back to my channel Thrills and Stitches. If you've been here before you know what I'm all about. I'm creating my dream wardrobe from scratch and I'm taking you along for the ride so maybe you can recreate some of the pieces that I make at home. This week I have been making a knit wrap dress. One of my viewers was kind enough to jump into the pit that is my Pinterest and find me something to make. <laughs> I really wanted to make this knit dress for a really long time but I wasn't quite sure if I would find the right kind of fabric for it because this dress is actually hand knit. As you can see it's very fluffy, very cozy. I can't knit. So the challenge here was to find a fabric that looks and feels similar to the original while still being a fabric that you can buy on the meat basically and I found something that I really liked it is a bit more of an at leisure take I would say on the dress it's not as elegant and like Sunday brunch kind of you know dress I would say it's more like a everyday kind of like throw on you can wear this with sneakers um, and like a puffer jacket or something like this in fall and you're gonna be good so I also wore this already out this week I went to see the musical Hamilton and I'm gonna take you out for that later to get ready with me but first let's make the dress Hey y'all, I'm gonna show you how I created the pattern for my knit wrap dress. So what you will need is some sort of pencil, I'm using a sharpie, you will need some scissors and you will need a pattern master because you are going to make this pattern to scale to your actual measurements. I'm going to use a ruler because I'm going to show you how I created this pattern in a miniature version. I made these cute little bodice slopers which basically just look like real life actual sized bodice slopers. Now I hear you say but I don't have a bodice block. Well go and visit the website in the folds. It has a really really great step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create your own bodice block to your own measurements from scratch. I would really recommend you have a look at this because whatever kind of garment you want to make you will always have to start with a bodice sloper and this is going to help you create something that actually fits you really well. Now when you have created your bodice block or if you already have some bodice blocks this is what they look like. This is the front and this is the back. In the front we have a shoulder dart that ends at the apex of the bust and we have a waist dart that also ends at the apex of the bust. In the back we have a smaller shoulder dart and we also have a waist dart. When you sit down with your bodice slopers, the way you start is you grab your front piece. I am going to create a line that is perpendicular in a right angle to the lower edge of my piece of paper. In your case, you might be using a craft paper roll or maybe some baking sheets or something that is big enough for you to create your pattern on. So I have this line which is in a 90 degree angle to one of the edges of my piece of paper. I'm now placing my front bodice so that the center front is flush with that line. I'm going to start to trace my pattern at the neck as well as the first part of my shoulder. I'm gonna end to trace where my dart starts. I'm now going to manipulate the dart out of the way like so. You can see me fold it together and then I'm going to extend my shoulder seam to the point where my shoulder ends with the dart closed. I'm also going to trace the armhole like so. Pivoting the front back to its original position, I will also close the waist dart like so. I'm then going to make a mark here where my waist ends, which is about here. I can now remove my bodice block. Now connect the end of my armhole to this mark that we've just created, as well as connect it to the center front line, like so. We now have a front bodice without any darts. So what we will have to do, because this is a wrap dress, we will have to mirror part of the front to the other side because the two pieces are gonna overlap like so. I'm going to take the measurement of my waist, of half my waist. I'm now gonna take that measurement and mirror it to the other side. So this is the entirety of my waist in one side of my front bodice. I'm then also going to extend the side seam here upwards by a little bit, probably as high as you want the strap to be that you're going to insert into the bodice later for you to be able to close it. What we will have to do next is to determine where our actual bust line is. So when I place my bodice sloper again, as I did earlier, my bust line usually is somewhere between the shoulder dart and the waist dart. This is the apex of my bust and in your actual bodice sloper you will also have that indicated by a line. So what I'm going to do is I place my ruler here and then I am going to create a dotted line here to know where my bust line is. And this is the point where I want my two front bodice pieces to cross. I'm now going to take my pattern master and create a nice curve from the shoulder neck point to this new crossing point that we've just determined. 
I'm just gonna create a slightly slanted curve here, and then I'm going to pivot my ruler like so and continue this curve. And this way we have our front piece done. Up next, we're gonna create the back side of our bodice. Again, as I did earlier, I'm gonna create a line that is perpendicular to one of my edges of my paper, so I can be sure it's a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna place my back bodice onto that line, and then I'm going to start to trace my neck hole, and then I'm going to trace the shoulder to the point where the dart starts. I'm gonna close the dart, I'm gonna manipulate it out of the way, and extend the shoulder to the end point, then I'm going to trace my armhole, then I can let go, and I also want to remove the waist dart. So I'm gonna manipulate the waist dart out of the way, mark that point, and then I'm gonna connect the armhole to that point I just created, as well as close the bodice with this waistline here. Because I have manipulated the dart out of the way like so, this extended my side seam quite a bit. I don't actually want that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the end of my side seam here by, in real life, probably two or three centimeters, by just a bit. And then I'm going to create a very natural slightly upwards curve here, but making sure that the line meets my center back line in a 90 degree angle. This way it's gonna help our bodice to fit a little bit better. And now what you want to do is you want to check a few things in your front and your back to make sure that they might match up. So one thing would be the shoulder seam. And as you can see here, the shoulder seam for my two front and back pieces match up perfectly, so that is fine. And now we also want to check the side seam. And because I just raised the side seam a little bit in the back, I will have to do the same thing in the front to make sure that these things match up. And again, we want a slight curve on our waistline anyway to make sure it's fitting our hips. Okay, so now we have our altered bodice block and we can create the rest of our pattern from here. To create the skirt pattern, we are going to create again a line perpendicular to one of the edges of our piece of paper that we know is straight. So in this case for me, that would be the lower edge here. Just gonna create one line here. Now I'm going to place my bodice, my front bodice onto that line so that the center front matches this line that I just created. I'm then going to trace the entirety of our waist like so, because like our front bodice, the skirt is going to overlap as well. Now that we have done that, what we need to determine, like we determined the bust line in the bodice, we need to determine the hip line in the skirt. So usually that measurement is somewhere between 18 and 25 centimeters, depending on how tall you are. I'm gonna say my waistline hits somewhere about here, and then I'm going to take my ruler or pattern master, I'm going to place it so that I can determine a line that is perpendicular to my center front line, and then I'm going to make a dotted line just to indicate where my hip line is. So what you will have to do in order to make sure that this is going to fit you, take a quarter of your hip measurement plus two centimeters and measure that on that line towards your side. So I'm gonna say that hits about somewhere here. And this is basically just so you can make sure that the skirt is going to fit around the widest part of your hips and isn't going to gape open in the, on the side or in the front. You're then going to take your pattern master to create a nice curve here, nothing too drastic probably. Now you're going to determine how long you want your skirt to be. So for me, because I'm quite tall, my skirt was about 80 centimeters long. So I took my measuring tape and from this point here, I measured 80 centimeters downward. I'm then going to create another line perpendicular to the center front. We are then going to connect the widest part of our hips in a straight line downwards like so. And the same thing applies to the other end of the skirt, just a straight line downwards. So just as a reminder, this is our center front and this entire part here is the overlap of the skirt. Like this part is the overlap of the bodice. Now the way you're going to use the skirt pattern is to create the front skirt, you're gonna just take the pattern as it is, place it on fabric, on two layers of fabric and cut it out. You're then gonna remove the paper pattern and you're going to fold it along the center front line like so and place it on your fabric like so, making sure that this part is the center back and it's placed on a fold. You're gonna place this on the fold of fabric, so when you cut it out and you open this, you're gonna have a symmetrical back skirt. And as you can see, the back skirt and the back bodice match up perfectly in the waist as well, just as the skirt when it's opened does with the front bodice like so. And now the last thing that you will have to do is to create your sleeve pattern. Now for your sleeve pattern, a trick that I've recently seen on TikTok again and I've used in the past myself, is you're gonna take your front bodice and you're gonna take your back bodice and you're gonna place them on a piece of paper so that the shoulders meet like so. You can then go ahead and trace your armhole like so 
and you're gonna extend it a little bit in a slight S shape to create this kind of like horseshoe shape, if you will. You will also have to make sure that you mark where your shoulder is, so the apex of your shoulder is here. You're then gonna grab your pattern master and you're gonna again making sure that you create a straight 90 degree line you're gonna create that line down here and what i like to do is i then fold my paper along that line that we've just created i then mark how long i want my sleeve to be i'm gonna make sure that this width on the half fits my hand at least so my hand can go through here i'm gonna then connect the end of my sleeve with the end of my armhole in the top and then I'm going to cut this on the fold so I can make sure that I have a symmetrical sleeve piece. Okay so we've got the pattern for knit dress done and if you have a Barbie at home you could cut that out and make a miniature version of your dress for your Barbie as well. <laughs> All right so let's make this thing. I think I can cut the pieces now. First thing, grab your front pieces and grab your back pieces and remove the paper pattern. Place your front pieces so that the right side is facing you. The right side is the good side of the fabric. The fabric side that you want to the world to see, basically, is the right side. Now I've placed my two front pieces so that they look at me and now I'm grabbing my back piece and I'm placing it onto the front, right sides touching. I'm now going to pin together the shoulder seams and the side seams. No, actually, I'm just gonna pin to get the shoulder seams first. Now we'll give that a straight stitch. I'm gonna go for a stitch length of three and a half because it's knit and I don't think there's gonna be too much tension on this. Up next, I'm going to overlock the shoulder seams. Um, this is only recommended if you think that the whole thing is going to fit. If you don't know if it will fit, skip this part for now and insert your sleeves first and then do the serging at the end. Up next, we're going to insert our sleeves and I'm going to do this in a way that I usually don't, but I saw this, I mean, I've done this before, but I've seen it again recently on TikTok and I thought it was a nice way to do it. So I'm going to do it the same way now. So we're opening up our bodice on one side. So we have the shoulder and the armhole spread out like this. So go ahead and determine the shoulder point of your sleeve, which you basically just do by folding it in half and snipping it a little bit so you know approximately where the center is. Up next, you place it so so that the center point needs the apex of the shoulder where your seam is in the bodice and then you place a needle there then you go ahead and place a needle one end of the whole thing and then also on the other side and now i'm going to place a few needles in between to make sure there's no warping or bulging going on right so you should have something looking a little bit like this so the arm hole is here, this is your shoulder curve, and now you can sew it. Up next we're gonna close the entire side seam from the arm sleeve to sides of the bodice. Guys, I think this looks good, if I may say so. Actually, this is a really cute top. <laughs> Should I just leave it as it is? And, uh, skip the skirt. No, no, I'm gonna make the dress, of course. It's always nice to have something that's just a one piece and you don't have to think about dressing it. I think this looks rather good and I like the long sleeves. I don't know what's happening, but I, I like like longish sleeves recently. I think that looks nice. Maybe because I'm very tall and having like long sleeves makes me look smaller from far away. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Um, but yeah, that's the top. 
I like it. This is going to be interesting how I'm going to finish the raw edges. I mean, actually, this is not fraying. You can leave that as it is if you wanted to, but I think I'm going to finish it in some way, shape or form. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. Now I am going to search the inner seam here and uh, then we can attach the skirt, I think. On to the skirt, we have our back skirt and we have two quite a bit larger front panels. So what we do, as per usual, is we place back and front, right sides touching, uh, one side of the front skirt, other side of the front skirt. And you can see that this is how all this would be opened up later. So time lapse for me to pin this together. Alright guys, looking good. Inside is surged clean, everything looks nice and neat. And we're basically done. The only thing that would be left to do would be to finish the edges here. And my idea for that is to go and get some bias tape tomorrow that's in the right color or something that comes close enough. And then adding that, attaching that to the corners here, to the edges, and then overturning it and hand sewing it down so that I have a super, super clean edge and you can't really see any stitches or anything. Because I think this piece really lives from its minimalism and from its clean look. And I really don't want to have any visible stitch um, along my neckline. So that's what I'm gonna do, which means I need to finish up for today. But so far, the sewing time for this piece was about two and a half hours. So it's a super, super quick project. And I'm quite pleased with it so far. So see you again next time when I get to sewing on this thing. All right, it's a new day. Hello, hello, hello. I bought this bias tape, which is quite narrow. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to attach it to the corners of my piece all the way around the neckline at first. And then I'm gonna see what it looks like. I'm gonna leave this open because I already made some straps which are going to come out of the dress here. So I'm gonna leave this open for now. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's see what it looks like. This is going to be tricky because I chose a very, very narrow bias tape, but I didn't want it to be too visible. So that's why I chose this one. I attached the bias binding to the whole of the neckline and it's actually a great idea to do this because it's going to keep the neckline from like losing its shape and losing its elasticity because you have this non-stretchy binding on here so it's going to keep a really nice crisp and clean neckline and what I'm gonna do now after I have attached the bias to the entirety of the outer edges of my dress I'm then going to fold it over once and just with a few hand stitches I'm going to secure it this way so you cannot see anything from the outside. 